Welcome students. In India, as part of transformational constitutionalism, the progressive judgments by Supreme Court and other legislations together are creating path to make gender justice not just binary restricted to male and female, but also wide range enough to create rights for even LGBTQ community. So today, let's look at LGBTQ rights and its status in India. To understand holistically how India is progressing, we need to understand the concept of civil union. This civil union and how it differs from marriage. The same logic has been deployed earlier in Navtej Johar case and also Nalsa case. So, protracting them or projecting them further, it has been used again in a judgment in 2023 where the dissenting judgment of D.Y. Chandrachot paved path to grant more rights. So, recently in weekdays, many rights are being conferred rather than memorizing one after the other. Let's understand a difference between these two concepts which are emerged as part of Obergefell versus Hodges case internationally. So, if we can understand this, we can categorize and easily identify which are parts of real rights that are being conferred in India rather than randomly memorizing them. So, broadly to understand, civil union confers rights only horizontally. What does horizontal right mean? That means as part of your civil union, you can confer rights only as part of partners rather than passing them as generation to next kith and kin. So this horizontal right includes things like maybe consensual sex and other rights where you inherit properties horizontally. When I say horizontally, inheriting property, it's about not having kids and passing it on to next generation. But after demise of their spouse or so-called conferred spouse, the property would be inherited by the opposite gender which they designate as. Just to take as an example, Suppose a third gender male, third gender male and third gender female are in civil union and they have a property, maybe an immovable property of house. After demise of male or female, it could be inherited among themselves to lead rest of their life. So it is restricted to this application. So when we understand this horizontal application, we need to understand the contrary part of it and what makes marriage distinct from a civil union and what extra rights are granted. So as part of marriage, along with this horizontal rights, we have a right to adopt, adopt children as part of CARA and Juvenile Justice Act together. Along with this adoption, we also have succession. When I say succession, it means passing on the inheritance to next generation, maybe their biological kids or those adopted kids. Okay. Along with this, just to highlight, civil union is just legal, not necessarily a socially accepted one. Marriage is socio legal when i say socio legal it has implication over personal laws as well what does personal law could could be example as you have muslim personal laws which are not part of article 13 so as part of article 13 in india we have review over only few laws which are designated or at least made from legislative body or also a delegated legislation by other executive bodies. But personal laws are made by 
personal law boards of respective religions so to examine them you need the concept of marriage and other civil crimes maybe other civil aspects so as its social legal aspects it has repercussions beyond legal laws so to understand this let's take example of couple of laws that are part of indian land of law one is governing law of hindu undivided family where they would get tax benefits so can a third gender couple form hindu undivided family can they get rights regarding tax benefits so as part of the third gender family that they form or civil union these tax benefits are not conferred because they can't form this hindu undivided family the second thing is about again succession as we said about succession can they write a will that means can they write a will to pass it on to someone else yes but now the problem comes about voidable union that means voidable union has two aspects of it about alimony that means when two third gender couples separate one spouse or the partner can't ask for alimony or claim anything else that's one part of it but when it comes to non voidable part when they are still part of it there are few rights which are being passed on in states like assam that it's responsibility of partner and children to take care of the old partner or parents so will they be applicable to this third gender the answer is again no so these things are about succession and these things are about forming a family so broadly hope you understood the philosophy behind what rights are being conferred and what not so if we just try to examine our understanding let's just take four cases and let's find the odd one out among them or you can comment them in uh, comment below so it's just to test our understanding whether we caught the philosophy behind what has been conferred in india and what not so first as part of conferring rights can they hold a common ration card just give a thought now can they have adoption and the third one can at least a partner who has biologically female genitals can she be rejected or given the right of abortion and the fourth one just it's about having privacy of a right to be forgotten so if you have followed the whole video it might be easy to understand and decipher which would not be con uh, conferred them so just pause for a while and try to answer for yourselves and come back to see the answer so here as this is just having a civil union this doesn't need formation of family the ration card has been conferred in the progressive judgment that has been delivered even the abortion rights are being given to those who might be raped or who were victims of contraceptional failure and even a right to be forgotten as part of privacy has been granted for them only thing that is not being granted is about adoption so hope you were able to catch the philosophy behind it so that it might be useful for you 
not just to remember the list of rights which may be non-exhaustive rather than by catching the philosophy you can just attempt those questions using your logic another day i'll be back before you with much more conceptual video that can help you build your concepts firmly till then it's time to be deduced